I, I just want to say with some pride that Maurice, Maurice who stood at the end of the line of uh, our Jamaican comrades, uh, works with us at AIDS Free World. At the other end of the line is Julia Greenberg, our associate director. So we are in every sense uh, involved in this struggle and enormously proud to be allied uh, with Robert. May I, may I make just one point? Six years ago when Robert got $10,000, the budget for UNICEF was over $2 billion a year. The budget for UNDP was between $3 and $4 billion a year. The budget for the World Food Program was over $4 billion a year. The budget for the World Health Organization was $1 billion a year. And they allowed themselves to find 10,000 paltry dollars because of the inherent discrimination that lay within the breast of the organizations that were willing to make the, uh, the contribution. Uh, my daughter worked for UNIFEM, the little tiny UN's women's agency which has now been superseded by a new agency called UN Women which was created just a couple of weeks ago by the United Nations. My daughter Ilana worked for seven years for UNIFEM and she was, I'm proud to say, the chair of UN Globe for a number of those years which was the gay and lesbian organization at the UN. And you cannot imagine the hatred and opposition visited on her when she was attempting to bargain for pensions and for same-sex benefits for partners and the extraordinary willingness of the UN Secretariat to bow to the ugliest visceral sentiments of the most homophobic nations. It's a long battle and what Robert says is entirely accurate. You've, you've got to fight this battle next week in serious and unremitting ways. And to draw this session to a close, and having already been acknowledged uh, as the person in UNDP who is bringing such centrality to the issue of HIV, is Mandeep Dawale, who is on my left, a long-term HIV and human rights activist, a physician and a lawyer by training, leading the human rights and sexual diversity work at the United Nations Development Program, Mandeep. Thanks very much. I'm going to put the mic down as well. Can everybody hear me? Yes? Okay, great. Um, so I'd like to begin by beginning greetings, bringing greetings to you from Jeffrey O'Malley, who really is the person responsible for stepping up the game at UNDP. Um, and also within the United Nations program generally on AIDS around sexual minority issues. And Jeff arrives tomorrow. He's very sorry that he couldn't be here with you today. And he'll ask me when he arrives tomorrow, so Mandeep, what were the three or four really important things that happened yesterday? What are the takeaway messages? This is what I'm going to tell him. Um, I think I'm going to tell him leadership is really important. And we came to the table too late, but we can really make a difference by showing real leadership now. Um, we need to respect the leadership of communities. We need to tell donors, where's the money? Where is the bailout for the AIDS response? There was bailouts for banks who are already a year later showing record profits again. Where is the bailout for the AIDS response? And I think you should all ask yourselves and ask the donors that. Why do we accept that funding is being flatlined? If there's money to bail out the banks and they're already showing profits, where is the crisis in public finances? And why is the AIDS response being held hostage to that? It's a big question. The second interesting reflection Michelle touched upon this morning is the redistribution of prevention resources. 96 to 97 percent of prevention resources are ill-targeted, ill-spent. Why aren't we angry about that? Why aren't we demanding that prevention resources be spent where the need and the risk is the greatest? I was really delighted and also depressed actually to open the New York Times on Monday to read an article about the U.S. national strategy on HIV, which I think is laudable. It's a wonderful strategy. But there was a one paragraph size caption that said, resources must go where the need is the greatest. Like this is news? That depressed me. 25 years on in the AIDS response, that is depressing that that is a revelation to the New York Times and to the administration of the United States government. I mean, I was just, I was shocked by that. But it's good, it's welcome, better late than never. I think we as a community need to foster support 
mentor and invest the next generation of leaders in the AIDS response and young MSM leaders. I'm always surprised, actually, at how many, uh, how many of us old-timers are around. And I think, you know, when Igor did his exercise, I, was, I knew that there was only going to be a few hands. And, and it's sad that that happens every time you do that. Um, and I think we should make a commitment, each and every one of us, to picking one person that we're going to mentor over the next year or two so when we come back next year, there's at least double the number of hands when we do the same exercise. So let us go away with that. And I think that programs like the United Nations Development Program, like UNAIDS, need to really invest in, in mentoring and supporting the young leaders of the MSM community, the LGBT community. I was also struck by the visibility and the engagement of and the interconnectedness of community, national, regional, and global networks. And I think that that's fantastic. It's made possible by technology, but it's also made possible by people being committed to working together and supporting each other. And I think we need to invest in much more of that, and particularly the community networks. And my final point really is around finding common cause. I think Common cause is really important. We heard a lot about building coalitions, people, different groups working together, mobilizing human rights activists, LGBT activists, AIDS activists. It's really important. What's the 